Testing, one, two, one, two, testing. You need to take them shoes off. They're not shoes, they're my house shoes. Take your house shoes off, I'm going to be taller than you. Oh, did he fart? Albus. Oh my God. Go on your bed. Blech. Bed. Hey, fart butts. Okay, is that better? Now that I have my house shoes on? Yes. Ready? I'm ready. Are you are we going good or are we uh testing? Did I press record? I don't, I don't know. No. Yeah, I did. Okay. Hi everyone. You know, sometimes I don't know, it's hard. Sometimes she just makes noises like that. It's just hard to talk sometimes, you know? Mm-hmm. Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new to watching, my name is Crystal. This is my husband Jacob. He is making a very special appearance in my August wrap-up this mm -hmm. month because most of the books that I read this month were picked by him. So um, if you missed my video back in July of him picking my August TBR, I will link that down below in the description if you want to watch it. It's a fun video to watch. Five out of the seven video videos, five out of the seven books that I read this month were picked by Jacob. So I figured it would be fun to bring him into my August wrap up and talk about all the books that he picked for me and share with him whether or not I liked the books or not. We'll see. There's one you know that I did not like. Okay, there's one yeah. I know. Simply because, <laughs> because I, kept, I couldn't. I kept pestering her about it, but. I couldn't hold it in. Most of not all of these books are gonna be more, more of like a um, first time reaction yeah. of what she's telling me. So let's get into it. Um, I read seven books this month. The first two I read, these were not picked by Jacob. So the first one I read is One Last Rainy Day by Kate Stewart. This is the one where I was on the couch and I was bawling and you were like, are you okay? <laughs> it's just a very emotional, like you feel, so this book um, is a spin-off book of the Raven Hood series. Locke, Exodus, and the Finish Line. There is a character in that series that you get very attached to, and this book is from his perspective. I have a whole entire review on my channel, like if you want more details on this book and also the Raven Hood series, I have a whole review on my channel, so I'll link that down below as well. So I gave this book five stars. I haven't stopped thinking about it since I read it. Um, if you haven't read the Raven Hood series, you absolutely need to. If you like dark romance with a lot of spice. I'm just trying to understand so I know what these are rated and what the <laughs> ratings mean. If you give a book like a two and a half, does that mean that it's okay and you would read it? Or what's what's like the lowest score you would recommend someone to read something? Okay, I like this question because I feel like a lot of people have a different rating scale kind mm -hmm. of thing, right? So me, one a one star is a book that I did not finish. It's like okay. a DNF. Like, I couldn't finish it. Did not fuck around with it. I didn't fuck I around did, with it. Did not I did not fuck, fuck around and it. find out. Two Star for me is a book I did not like, I did not enjoy, and I would not recommend to anyone. Like, did I just didn't. It? But I finished it. Okay. But I didn't like it. Three Star is like a middle of the line book for me. Like, I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. It was like, it had some good parts, but it was a book that I'll probably forget about. Like it's very okay. forgettable. Four star is a book that I really enjoyed, but it wasn't perfect or I didn't get that five star feeling because with a five star book, you just get this feeling. Like you're just like, that's a five star, easy, no question. But a four star is like, it was written very well, but it just, there was something missing or like it wasn't perfect. It didn't have, or like there were parts of it that drag maybe or something. Five star is like, like you just get this feeling like this is a five star book. It was amazing. It made me feel things like mm -hmm. that's, a five star for me, like I have to feel, it's a feeling, yeah. like it's just a feeling. Next book I read is If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. This is the book that we read in my book club for August for this month. This book is a dark academia. I gave this four stars. This book is basically about a group of theater students who are obsessed with Shakespeare. One of them dies. And basically this book is about like the mist. Yeah, it's like a whodunit, like it's a mystery behind the murder. So this is like a murder mystery, dark academia. These students are obsessed with Shakespeare, okay? So there's a lot of Shakespeare references in this book, especially in the first like 100 or so pages. It is very Shakespeare heavy. Where there were some parts where I was like skimming through the Shakespeare mm -hmm. because I was like, I don't care about the Shakespeare. Like I get to, let's get to the murder mystery kind of yeah. thing. But I really, really enjoyed it. Okay. But it's just like some little parts of it where I was like, okay, the Shakespeare is a little bit too much. It's, it's like, it's a little bit overkill. But I can see why there was Shakespeare in it because it really contributed to the story because they're obsessed with it. That's like, it's like a huge part of their life. The setting of this is everything. It's set in like a, 
um, a theater college. It's set during the fall, so they go through like a Halloween scene in here, which is really cool. The writing is really, really great, and I just, I really liked it. I've never read anything like this before. Really? Yeah, it was very unique, very different. Yes, four stars. Okay, now we're gonna get into the books you chick. I can't talk. We're getting into the books I picked. Thank you. Okay, first book I read that Jacob picked for me. Funny. Funny. I had no idea what it was about, it right? It's different. But um, I've seen this before. I've heard there's some stuff about it. I don't have no idea what I mean by that. I just mean that I've seen it before and people have talked about it. So what did you think? Oh, actually, I think I, I know what it, I know what, okay. I'm just gonna let her go. I did not like it. <laughs> so she doesn't give spoilers in these reviews. I these, don't. But, um, but I didn't like some, it. Give them some more context on why. So I did a whole reading vlog on this book. If you want to see me reading this book and like see my reactions while I'm reading okay. it, I'll link the reading vlog down below. But I ended up giving this two stars. Dang! This is not a book I would ever recommend to anyone. Uh -huh. Like, I don't think I would ever recommend this book, ever. Although, I will say... Can you see how say, someone would like it? Yes. Okay. I can see why people would enjoy it because it is so different and unique. I feel like you either love this book or you hate it. Well, I only finished it because you picked it for me. If not, I would have DNF'd it. I 100% would have DNF'd it. In a nutshell, this is basically about a group of girls who call themselves Bunny, but they do it in a very weird way, almost like they're brainwashed or possessed or like under some kind of spell. But there's one girl, Samantha, who is like an outsider and she ends up getting invited to one of their parties that they have at the at their house. And some weird stuff is happening at this party. And then Samantha just starts getting kind of enthralled in their world and she in a nutshell kind of becomes one of them. And that is really it's creating some conflict between her and her best friend. So it's like a mean girls but a little darker. Yes. And they do some really really weird stuff the reason why i didn't like it is because it's not really like the cultish type of vibe because that i i don't mind but it has a mix of like animalistic type of tone and it also has a sexual undertone but you're mixing the cultish type of vibe the academia type of vibe the animals and the sex it's not my thing it's not my thing <laughs> okay well it's, there you go two that's two star sorry so the next book <clears throat> next book of Liquor in the Dark. So, tell us about this. Okay, I love this. Oh, I loved there it. There you go. Went from a two to a... A five. Five, there you this go. This is okay. a five star for me. So basically, this is a serial killer <laughs> murder mystery. So the main character in this is a psychologist, mm -hmm. and her father ends up getting sent to prison for the murders of six young girls when she was little. Mm -hmm. This book takes place... Is it 20 years later? later? She all grown up and then tries to find out what happened? Yes. Mm -hmm. So she's all grown up now and um, there's other girls that are going missing and she kind of, it has the same vibe as mm. the girls that gone, had gone missing when she was younger. And so this story is about everything unraveling and her trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Sounds like a book I would read. You would love this book. Okay, I might read this. You would love it. It was so good. I loved the writing. I felt very connected to the characters. Mm -hmm which I feel like sometimes in a thriller is hard to do because usually thrillers aren't really about the character. It's more about the story and the mystery unraveling, mm -hmm. but this one had both for me. So I felt very connected to the characters while, while also being connected to the mystery. This would be a, an amazing movie. Really? Like this, if this were to become a movie or a show, oh, it would be, I would eat it up. It would be so, so good. Yeah. I loved it. If you like thrillers, I would absolutely recommend that one for sure. Indigo Ridge. I loved it. Oh my God. This is a five star. This is actually my favorite book of the month. Really? Yes. Oh, so good. It was so good. This is the beginning, the first book of the Edens series. I ordered the whole series. Basically, this book is it's a small town cowboy romance mixed with murder mystery, mixed with small town charm, and then it also has a lot of family dynamics in it. The main male character in this has a huge family called the Edens. Mm -hmm. It's the Edens family. And you get, to, you get to know a little bit about their whole entire family. Basically, this book is about Winslow, who is a new, he, she's the new chief of police in their small town and she comes into this small town and she meets Griffin. Griffin is like Rip from oh Yellowstone. God. That's why she likes it. That's my man. You love Rip too. I like Rip. You love Rip. <laughs> so there's a string of deaths that are occurring basically because Griffin is 
he's kind of a big guy in the town because his whole his whole family basically runs the town. Mm -hmm. Griffin and Winslow end up having to kind of work together to try and figure out what is going on with this string of deaths. Yeah. I loved every second of this book. I just ate it up. It was, I had so much fun reading it. It was so enjoyable. At the end, Debbie Perry introduces the next characters that are going to be in the next book, which is all about the Edens. So it's basically this whole series. Each book is about a different um, family member. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, next one. There He Kept Her by Joshua, was that Moling? What'd you think? Three star. Three star. This is a three star. So three star is... It was. It wasn't good. It wasn't bad. This book is very. For, it was very forgettable for me. Okay. Um, it's a middle of the line thriller. I didn't hate it. I didn't enjoy it. Um, it's kind of just like I read it. It was. I, I finished it, and it was decent. There were like some pockets of it that were really good, um, but for the most part, it it was just like a. It was like. Eh. So this book is about. Um, she forgot. <laughs> Oh, okay. Now I remember. Two it's coming, it's coming back to me. Okay. Two teenagers go missing, okay? And the detective is trying to figure out what happened, why they went missing. The thing I didn't like about this book is that you know going in what happens. Mm. Literally, right in the first chapter, you know exactly what happened to the two teens. And that took away the whole mystery for me. Oh, I hate that. Let's go I'm ahead. like, what? Let's just, that was a dumb move. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. I would say read it if you are just looking for like a quick thriller to read, but I really didn't love it. There's plenty of other thrillers that are better yeah, than this. I would agree. Okay. okay. Hold on. The, what? Let me, let me introduce this. Okay. This is the last one. This was, I probably was the, I would say most excited for this one simply because of the cover. It reminds me of an old school VHS tape and yep. it has all the markings and everything. I remember going to the video store and seeing like these old school tapes in these big plastic uh, covers. Like, yeah. Uh, and this looks just like one, so I thought it was really cool. So what did you think? It was a four star. Okay. Four so didn't stars. didn't love it, but it was still good. No, I loved it. It just wasn't perfect. Okay. Four star, I love. I think this just didn't give me like a five star feeling. I can't like put my finger on it, mm -hmm. but I did really love it and I really enjoyed it. This was such a cool book. It was mm -hmm. so unique. It was so different. Um, I would consider this a lighthearted young adult horror because there are some graphic and disturbing scenes in this book, more so towards the end of the book. The main characters are young and it is set in the 80s, which mm. is really cool. And there's actually a little bit of dry humor. This is basically, I mean, exactly what it is. My best friend's exorcism. There's a group of girls, there are two girls specifically who are best friends. Mm -hmm. And one of the girls starts acting really weird and really different. And and the other girl is like, something is not right. Like something's not right. And so, yeah, I mean, I guess you can kind of- Assume the rest, right? Assume the rest. Someone who doesn't like horror is kind of scared of horror would this be a book let's just say they wanted to get into horror but they didn't want to get like super scared right away would this be a good yes. book yep so there you go if you want to consider trying horror but you don't want to scare your socks off <laughs> try this this book is told in third person i'm very picky when it comes to third person writing um i feel like sometimes it makes me feel very disconnected from the characters but in this book the third person really really contributed to me um, to the story and I feel like if this was told in first person it wouldn't have been as good I really loved the writing this was my first Grady Hendrix book and I will absolutely be reading more we're actually reading a Grady Hendrix book in October in my book club so with all the books I picked we know this one is your favorite Indigo Ridge is my favorite this oh is... you want to rank them let's rank them okay yeah so out of the bo five books you chose for me this month this is definitely the order in which I liked Loved them, liked, loved them, loved them, liked them. This is your her ranking. This is my best. ranking. This is my ranking from best to worst. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> there, there you go. go. Indigo Ridge for sure, number one. Then A Flicker in the Dark. These were both five star reads for me, um, but I liked Indigo Ridge a little bit more. Um, my best friend's Exorcism. This was a four star. Really enjoyed that. And there he kept her three star, 2.9. And then this, two star. Least favorite. Okay. So did you enjoy, did you have a good month for books? Is there, um, or were I would say like, this uh, was a average? middle of the line average month for me in terms of okay. reading because I had a couple of really great ones, but then I also had a couple that I didn't like. So, okay. but this is one of my new favorite books ever. Okay. So wow. that's a lot. So this really, uh, stepped it up. You always want every book to be great or do you mind books that are not so you can appreciate the ones that are even more? 
Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. Okay. I mean, you know not every book is going to be for you. Not every book I read is going to be amazing, and I know that. Um, but September is coming, and uh, that means... What does that mean? September's coming? Oh, pumpkin spice lattes! That means fall is here. Fall is here. So I'm very excited for some videos I have coming up. I'll be doing uh, my fall TBR. That means all the books I'm gonna be, that I plan to personally read this fall season. They're not necessarily fall themed books. It's just the books that I'm gonna be reading this fall season. Another video coming up in September where I wanna do my fall book recommendations. And then October, I'm gonna be doing some spooky season books. Like books I would recommend to read during October. Lots of good videos coming up. Honestly, fall and winter is my favorite time for reading. I cannot freaking wait. Well, it's just her favorite time period. This is my favorite time of year, period. So I'm gonna be in a real good mood. Mm -hmm. Lucky him. Yes. <laughs> I love fall and winter. Because so. I'm just like always happy. She is. But anyway, y'all, we're gonna end this video here. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you to my beautiful husband for joining us in today's video. <laughs> And yeah, I'll see y'all in my next one. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, do all the YouTube things, turn on the notification bell, all the things. And yeah, I'll see you in my next video, y'all. Bye. Bye.